So folks, I am happy to inform you that as we speak, old Donnie is undergoing yet another one of his absolutely legendary temper tantrums, rampaging, smashing and throwing things all over Mar-a-Lago right now because he has just been exposed in a way that's humiliating to him and that undercuts not only his legacy as a tough guy, not only his, his, uh, his legacy of being quote-unquote America first, but is undercutting one of his most major and recent attacks on Biden and the Biden administration. And why he's freaking out in particular is not only that he's been exposed, but that his best buddies in Congress going on TV trying to defend him failed miserably because he understands, guys, that this scandal just became about him more than Biden and his best buddies in the world can't even protect him. Let's start with little Marco absolutely failing and he does it twice the stage and 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 he shot it down when he shot it down based on the advice of, of the military you don't think he should have order, ordered it to be shot down earlier against the advice of, of of the joint chiefs do you well i think it first begins by understanding when did we first track it over airspace uh theoretically if it entered to alaska norad it's our system of spotting things and protecting both american and canadian airspace should have spotted it a lot earlier so i'd love to hear from military officials about why wasn't it addressed earlier what were the options at that point again look maybe in a closed session or maybe in the settings of uh, with the benefit of hindsight they'll have some real good arguments about why it couldn't be done i recognize that you shoot something out of the sky that's the size that's the size of three buses and it lands in the wrong place it could hurt harm kill people or damage infrastructure but by the same token i think that if that was the case then i think it really would have been helpful for the president of the united states to get on national television and explain to the american people this is what we're dealing with this is what i'm going to do about it and uh, and this is why i haven't done it yet none of that happened and i don't know why and in fact i don't know why they waited so long to tell people about this and uh, uh if they knew the trajectory that it was on it seems from late last week all right, and, early and, and, and we're, we're also told, by the way, that, uh, that this happened three times under the previous president. Obviously, there were no public notifications there. Uh, Senator Rubio, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, let's bring in Admiral Mike. So that's the first one. I'm going to show you another where he tries to go out and say, like I net noted last night with the balloon stuff, that when, when Biden took it down, he did it in a way that could maximize the ability to collect all the debris, which could have useful information for the United States and minimize the risk that any individual citizen would get hurt. What Trump was calling for was for it to be shot down of a seven mile radius over people. And as noted there, and Rubio acknowledges it, that people may have passed away because of it and then at the end he gets hit with this little line and this was one of the first indications we have that actually there were three balloons like this on, with Trump while he was in office and he didn't shoot any of them down. He goes on TV later again and Trump is fuming right now. Reports are saying he's fuming at Mar-a-Lago and we have his own words for you later on and what happens here is that Rubio digs, if, digs the hole even deeper. As uh, vice chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, do you know, um, has the U.S. recovered any parts of the Chinese spy balloon? Has the, and did the monitoring of the balloon during its journey, as far as you know, yield any worthwhile information for the U.S.? Well, we won't know that until we get into a secure setting this week in Washington, and uh, probably most of that is something we won't be able to disclose in any great detail, other than to say this, and that is that, you know, they're going to try to recover this. Apparently, it's in shallow waters. We'll see what they recover from it. But I don't think the technology or the existence of these things is a great mystery. I think what's embedded here is a clear message. It's not a coincidence that this happens leading up to the State of the Union address, leading up to Blinken's visit to China. The Chinese knew that this was going to be spotted. They knew that we were going to have to react to it. They flew it over military installations and sensitive sites across, right across the middle. I mean, look at the flight path of this thing. It's a diagonal shot right through the middle of the continental United States. And the message embedded in this to the world is we can fly a balloon over airspace of the United States of America and they won't be able to do anything about it to stop us. They calculated this carefully with a message embedded in it. And I think that's the part we can't forget here. It's not just the balloon. It's the message they're trying to send the world that Amer we can do whatever we want and America can't stop us. What information do you think the spy balloon might have gleaned as it, as it traveled 
Uh, I know it was over the, the fears that it was over some U.S. military installations. I'm also wondering if uh, infrastructure was probably part of the surveillance uh, task it had. Well, again, it would be speculation other than to tell you that those things usually at that altitude and what they're doing is probably trying to collect on signals, on electronic information that's transiting that they can pick up on. There are various other means that they can do that as well. And that's why I go back to the whole point of the message. There are probably other ways that China could acquire whatever they acquired using this balloon. I may be wrong. There may be some unique attributes to it that I'm, that I'm not aware of yet, but we'll learn more about this week. But I think more than anything else, beyond just the ability to collect information, it is the, the, the ability to send a, a clear message, and that is that we have the ability to do this, and America can't do anything about it. If they're not going to be able to stop a balloon from flying over U.S. airspace, how is America going to come to your aid if we invade Taiwan or take land from India or take islands from the Philippines and Japan? And, and I think the fact that they would do that leading up to State of the Union, leading up to what was then Blinken's scheduled visit, none of that is a coincidence. And we need to understand clearly there was messaging behind this. But you, so you think that, first of all, uh, I guess there are two parts to a question I have following up on that. One is the Pentagon says that they know of the Chinese doing this at least four other times previously, once at the beginning of the Biden administration, three times during the Trump administration, it seems to be you're saying, oh, you're saying no, that's not true. But in any case, is, is the is the No, I know the what difference? I'm saying. Okay, well, the difference is this. Are we aware? Have we seen the Chinese fly these balloons in the past? Yes. I think there's even Twitter pictures of it flying at one point uh, off the coast of the U.S. Uh, down south somewhere. The, the, the existence of the balloons is not a mystery to people in, in, the, in, in that field. What, what we've never seen, what is unprecedented, and whoever the source was at the Department of Defense would have to acknowledge this, what is unprecedented is a balloon flight that entered over Idaho and, and flew over Montana, over all these sensitive military installations, Air Force bases, ICBM fields, right across the middle of the country. That has never happened before. That is unprecedented. That, that it flew briefly over some part of the U.S. or continental U.S., that's one thing. But what we saw this week... It's unprecedented. And that's why everyone's reacting the way they're reacting. We've never seen this. So th this is no comparison to anything that may have happened up to this point. Like, absolutely humiliating. And, you know, the host there, he's just not putting up the BS. He's trying to say there's some sort of difference here. There's some sort of false equivalency here. Or there's some, you know, that, that it's not fair to compare the Biden balloon and the Trump balloons. When in reality, it seems pretty comparable. And even if there are differences, remember the whole narrative from Trump, like, again, we're going to explore later, is that they wouldn't have dared to do anything like this when Trump was in power. He wouldn't have had to shoot anything down because he was so tough and China was so afraid of big bad Donnie that they wouldn't even have dared to fly the balloon in the first place. So it would have been a moot point with Trump in power. They wouldn't even have needed to do anything because Trump is strong and Biden is weak and, and it's not passing the smell test. And again, Trump hates a few things. He hates being called out on his lies, but he really hates when he sends people out into the media to lie for him and they fail. Why do you think he went through so many press secretaries? Because they weren't good enough to cover his BS with lies, and he kept churning them out like they were, you know, like they were donuts at a, at a bakery. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it gets even worse as another crony congressman tries to defend Trump, and, and it, it, it goes exactly like you would expect. It can tell you. We also briefed on that there was apparently two or three incidents in the previous administration as well. Well, that's what they're saying now. But I think that, that the administration needs to come forward because this is not an ability to, to um, say that this is a, a crisis that was handed to them. This is a crisis that has developed as a result of this president during his administration, allowing China to do a similar mm -hmm. act before, not responding. And then clearly in this one, not seeing the urgency of what was an unfolding. I mean, the president allowed this to go across our most sensitive sites and wasn't even going to tell the American public. If you hadn't broken this story, mm -hmm. uh, the American public would not have even known. There was no attempt to notify Congress, no attempt to put uh, together the Gang of Eight. Uh, I think this administration lacks urgency. Do you, the Pentagon says that they were able to use some counter- just embarrassing. Again, the false equivalencies trying to suggest this would never happen under Trump. It's just wild, guys. Like, it's wild to make this a political point. What Biden did was make the best out of an awkward situation. Yeah, you would have liked it to have not happened, of course, but he did it in a way that maximized benefit and minimized harm. The best thing a president can do in a situation like this, showing leadership and showing calm, calculated thought not violent reaction in a, in a buffoonish way like all of these Republicans are calling for.
But then maybe the most ridiculous clip yet, which is Tom Cotton saying that if anyone's at fault for the Trump balloons, which may or may not have happened during Trump's years, it's actually Obama. Well, what about this contention that these balloons have gone over the U.S. or some portion of the U.S. under previous administrations and they didn't shoot it down that we know of? So I've spoken to a lot of former Trump administration officials. They say they're not aware of anything like this happening during their administration. It's possible maybe that it happened first during the Obama administration and the military was told at the time that this is no big deal and they shouldn't raise the alarm bells on it. Uh, we need to get answers to that as well, though. I, I think some may be conflating what Lucas just reported, you know, balloons floating within the 12 mile exclusionary zones of places like Hawaii or Guam and a spy balloon going all across the middle of the country. Those are two very different mm -hmm. circumstances. Maybe what's even more worrisome is, one, did our senior military know about these balloons in the past and, and not inform their civilian superiors during the Trump administration? Or maybe worst of all, did we not know about these balloons in the past and we only learned about them in retrospect by studying historical data? Again, these are all open questions for which the American people deserve answers and we in Congress are going to get those answers. Okay, so... You know, guys, that makes me feel young again. That makes me feel young again to see Republicans on a Sunday show blaming Barack Obama for something. Man's been out of office for like a you know the almost a decade now, better part of a decade now. Man's been not president for a long, long, long time. Um, he hasn't made a Washington decision in forever, and they're still blaming him. Look, the reality, apparently now the narrative from Trumpers is that maybe this happened, but they didn't tell Trump. And if they did tell him, he would have shot it down. But the military hid it from him. I don't actually buy that story. But the point is, Trump saw these four and there were more, but these four plus efforts to defend him in the mainstream media and they all failed miserably. And he lashed out and reports of him freaking out at Mar-a-Lago were rife, and he also said the following. We have him in his own words when it says, the Chinese balloon situation is a disgrace, just like the Afghanistan horror show and everything else surrounding the grossly incompetent Biden administration. There are only good they are only good at cheating in elections and disinformation, and now they are putting out that a balloon was put up by China during the Trump administration in order to take the heat off the show, slow-moving of Biden fools. China had too much respect for Trump. <laughs> To, I don't know why he writes it like that for this to have happened. And it never did just fake disinformation in a statement. The Department of Defense said that the Chinese spy balloons flew over the United States at least three times on Trump's watch. Now, Trump allies are arguing that it's blah, blah, blah. It's different. One of the arguments is that Trump didn't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I've seen some people say that. But it, let's be charitable to Trump and say he didn't know about the balloons. That still undercuts his main point that he was so tough. China would never do it. Either they did didn't do it and you know they're they, and I, that's a clear lie because military is saying the balloons flew over or they did and no one told trump but it still undercuts his tough guy image donald trump got humiliated here and he now this biden scandal is actually about his own weakness to china and that's why things are flying down at mar-a-lago catch up everywhere i bet